Um, so when we last spoke in April, uh, you hinted that you you hinted that you were looking at more acquisition opportunities. Uh, could you tell me a bit about the recent announcement of the planned acquisition of Villagen and Baker Square and how that fits into your overall strategy and the portfolio? Sure. So we really have a three pronged growth strategy. First is organic, uh, meaning opening up organic, uh, famous Dave's small box barbecue restaurants. Um, second is the uh, utilizing the additional capacity in the the current big box restaurants. Famous Dave's Granite City restaurants are designed to do something around 2x the the volume that they're currently doing. And so we've done a lot of tests, as you know, and we talked about last time on ghost kitchens, virtual uh, concepts, and dual concepts, and bolting those together to to use the latent capacity in the, those big box restaurants. And then the third is uh, M&A, and, and um, the, the Village Inn and, and Baker Square obviously fall into the, the M&A category. Okay, great. Um, so what drew, to, what drew you to these specific brands? So I, I've been a customer of Baker Square for 30 years. Uh, it, it's, it's legendary in my mind. It's part of the family tradition. Uh, it's part of almost every family's uh, holidays in the Midwest. I, I, I've known it very well, and I've known how powerful those proprietary items from a restaurant can be. Mm -hmm. And um, the Village Inn is very similar to the Famous Dave's uh, system, similar number of units, 100 and some franchise units and 20 some corporate. And um, it, it's a system that's been around for decades, which, which we love. Uh, the legacy of Village Inn is very similar to the legacy of Famous Dave's. Um, it's withstood the test of time. And over the last three to four years, we've spent a lot of time, effort, and resources uh, dusting off the Famous Days brand, bringing it to the next evolution, revitalizing the restaurants, uh, rejuvenating the, the, the menu, uh, and implementing a lot of changes that, that bring the next evolution of the brand to life. And I think there's a similar story in, in Village Inn. The, I've spoken with many of the franchisees. They're all super excited to work with us and partner with us. And they kind of see it the same way that I saw Famous Days three years ago. You know, what's the vision? What's the next one, three, five years look like? Um, and, and how do we grow? And so we're, we're just starting to lay that vision out for them. Uh, we're going to be very collaborative with them. They've worked uh, some two and three generations with the brand. And so they, they know and have a really good idea and vision of what they would like to see and where they would like to go over the next uh, five years. Um, and so you, you guys have obviously been really acquisitive recently with Granite City, Real Urban. Um, so how do you see Barbecue Holdings as kind of evolving uh, with all these new brands kind of in your portfolio? Yeah, I think, you know, um, a, a larger company is good for everyone. Uh, more resources, uh, personal growth opportunities for our team members, and a, a larger team gives access to uh, more opportunity from a, a restaurant and concept perspective. Many of our uh, franchise partners are multi-unit operators, meaning multi-brand uh, operators, and um, anything from a Hilton Hotel to uh, QSR, a lot of our partners are operating those, those brands. And um, it, 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 we can simplify their business if they can come to us and have access to multiple brands uh, and, and one leadership team. And, and that's really the goal, build a, uh, a really well diversified portfolio of food and beverage brands that have withstood the test of time and are, are platforms or systems that are, are coiled and ready for growth. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the challenges you see of kind of going down this road of, of more acquisitions and, um, and, and this type of growth? You know, we're, we're very patient with acquisitions. Um, if, if something makes sense, and really fits for us, um, we will explore it and, and push forward. Um, but we, we're, not, uh, we're not desperate to do anything. Like I said, we have those three prongs for growth. Um, we're extremely busy with those three and we're very opportunistic. So when, when something presents itself, um, we have the balance sheet, the resources, and the ability to take advantage of the opportunity. Um, but it, it'll, it'll be a very conservative type approach. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know that you've mentioned this before and we've spoken about this, uh, your dual brand strategy. Uh, do you think that these will, Village Inn and Baker Square will fit into that? Can you see them kind of 
uh, fitting in in, in a, a famous pre-existing Famous Dave's restaurant? Yeah, potentially. Um, you know, we, we know the Baker Square pies um, can be sold from a kiosk, can be sold from a pickup point, uh, and, and we think that's a great fit for both Famous Dave's and Granite City. Um, Village Inn as a, as a breakfast, the breakfast segment of Village Inn can certainly be used in, in our other boxes also. So um, th there's a lot of IP, there's a lot of, of value, and there's a lot of puzzle pieces that we can see where they fit. We've done a lot of tests um, from ghost kitchens to dual concepts, and we've had a lot of success in, in both of those areas. So we have the ghost kitchens, we have the dual concepts, and now we have even more boxes to, to fill that capacity with. And so we're, we're excited to start um, putting that puzzle together. Mm -hmm. And it expands your day parts because now you have breakfast and you have, if people want to pick up a pie, then that could be like kind of more the dessert. Yep. Today. Correct. Um, and do you think that for kind of pulling back a little bit, do you think that there will be more acquisitions down the road? Are you looking to any, to get into any specific <coughs> verticals to kind of round out your portfolio? Yeah, I, I think there's certainly going to be a lot of growth in each of those three channels. Um, it, it'll take us some time to digest this, the Village Inn Baker Square acquisition, get our arms around it, um, make sure we're maximizing all of the, the, the assets. Um, but once we, once we feel comfortable with it, um, you know, we always have a pretty strong pipeline of opportunities uh, that I'm, I'm looking at, uh, I'm monitoring a lot of seeds that have been planted. And um, when the time is right, uh, you know, we'll, we'll continue to grow. Mm -hmm. And do you have any goals specifically for, for Famous Dave's? Uh, for Famous Dave's brand specifically, we're opening end of the summer two of our line serve concepts. Now we bought Real Urban Barbecue in Chicago last year for the IP so we can understand you know, how a line serve operates. Very similar to a Chipotle where you choose your food, your, your meat, your sides, and then you pay and you can either sit down or uh, take the food to go. Um, we have that model opening in Coon Rapids, Minnesota in September. Um, we have one opening in Las Vegas, a uh, similar time period. And then we have a counter serve drive through opening in Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. and so those are the, the prototypes that we'll have for the Famous Dave's brand. And, um, you know, once we have proof of concept, then we'll really start to grow and push those, those new prototypes. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely a new way to experience the brand. And I'm glad that you mentioned drive through because that is... That, that seems to be the big direction that the industry is is headed for sure, uh, even even if they had not explored drive through before. So um, uh, could you tell me a bit about that? Sure. You know, I, I agree. And, and we started working on drive through even pre pandemic, mm -hmm. figuring out how to do it for barbecue because it, it's not easy. Um, barbecue is complicated as it is, but to get it right through a drive through adds another couple layers to it. Um, we, we think we have it with this line serve uh, that we've learned through uh, a real urban barbecue. And, um, you know, it, it's just a matter of finding the, the correct real estate to build that one. The one in Salt Lake City is a counter serve. We have a handful of counter serves already built. Um, and so it'll be typical to what you would find in a QSR uh, with the drive through. Now, we also believe that there's opportunity for multiple lanes. Um, you know, the DSP, the third third party delivery drivers, so they don't have to come into the restaurant. They're able to just drive through the lane also, and uh, the food will be brought to their car instead of them entering the restaurant. Again, allows us to shrink the, the footprint of the, the restaurant, and uh, it's much more convenient for the customer. And what role do you think technology plays in these plans? Big role. Um, you know, I, I think we are, are pretty close to the cutting edge of technology. Our digital marketing team is, is superb. Prior to the pandemic, we were about 50% of our sales were off-premise. And a lot, of those, a lot of those sales came through digital channels. Um, Post-pandemic, we're, we're around 60%. And uh, a lot of that comes from technology. And, and we love it because um, Famous Dave's had pre-pandemic around a 40-year-old age demographic and higher. 